Um, before we get started, I'm just going to go over a little bit of the Zoom etiquette so that we, you know, have a smooth meeting. Um, please keep yourself on mute. This is to minimize some of that background noise and disruption. If you don't know where it is, it's at the bottom of your screen and it looks like a little microphone. Just click that. Um, if you're comfortable having your camera on, we would love to see everyone's faces. Um, if you have any questions during the meeting, you can certainly utilize the chat box and we will try to help you and assist you through there. Um, now, moving on, let's see. Do we have, well, I'm gonna go. Give, yeah, I was gonna say, let's give the background. We have um, additional NOVA team members here on the call today too. Yes, introductions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, not so much introductions, just to let everyone know that we're, we're giving them a little bit of chance to um, log everyone in for, for today's meeting. Um, so I know they're feverishly um, trying to check everyone in, no, so just yeah, give us a second. I can't remember. I have one. Mm -hmm. Yep, so we have um, myself as well as Christina and Gurley from the NOVA team. Um, she is going to be assisting us in the background checking people in for the meeting and just verifying addresses, um, making sure that all the votes are counted. And I see people are still entering the waiting room. Yeah, we've got a couple couple trickling in here, so. Okay. Yeah, we'll just give it a few minutes. Um, we can all stare at each other. Some of you I've seen just so recently. <laughs> I hope everybody enjoyed some of the sunshine out there the last two days. It's been amazing. Cold today, but very, um, very bright and sunshiny. So, Christina, give me um, a heads up when you're uh, close to checking in. So I don't all ask all of them. Yeah, we're still letting a couple in from the waiting room here. Okay. Trying to Just keep that. numbers. So again, we thank everyone for your patience as we go through this process. Yeah, and I'm just going to remind everybody to keep yourselves on mute to avoid some of that background noise and disruptions. Uh, it looks like we have 93 joined the meeting now. Obviously, we have three NOVA representatives and one Taylor Morrison representative. So we're kind of right at, we're very close. Oh, we've got another homeowner to our threshold here. Um, and so, Brandy, do you want to go over just how owners change their names in the participant room just to make sure we're able to connect you and properly check you in here. Yeah, so let's go over some of this process. Um, I have used my name as an example. You can see Brandy Gimbel, 9011 Arrow Root. So um, we're gonna ask that you rename yourself to include your first name, your last name, and your address. This is gonna help us keep track of attendance and it's gonna ensure that everybody participating is a verified homeowner. Um, if you need assistance doing that, uh, you can hover your mouse over the, like your little picture. There should be three dots that appear in the right-hand corner, and you can select rename from the drop-down menu. And then again, enter your first name, last name, and address. And I know, I know this will take everybody a minute. Um, and then for those of you that are calling in from a phone line, we will get to you shortly. I will likely call on you by your phone number and we will take a uh, roll call verbally.
Thank you. I can see all those changing. You're not getting enough sound either. They actually, they cut us off. Once we get everybody checked in and, you know, in the background, we will go over the voting process. In the meantime, while everyone's doing that, I will officially welcome you to the Oak Tree Homeowners Budget Ratification Meeting. I will officially call the meeting to order at 4.09. And then while the um, Minova team is checking everyone in, we'll go through some, uh, just some tasks here. The uh, next uh, item of business is to approve our last year's budget ratification meeting minutes. So I need a second. Yep. So moved and seconded. Perfect. Great. And so what we do is this may seem odd to do them a year later, but you always approve like meeting minutes at that meeting. So that's why we're doing budget ratification meeting minutes from last year um, at today's meeting and we'll do today's next year. So we'll go ahead and mark that off for our minutes. And then once um, we get to that next section, Brandy will start talking through the voting process. But in the meantime, I'll just take this opportunity um, while they're doing the background work, kind of go over a few things um, as part of our budget ratification. And uh, let's see what I have in my notes. So yes, this is a change from last year's. And if those of you who have lived here, you know, for a few years now within the community, um, you know, the process does change annually as statutes and HOA laws change. And so this year's changes, um, I know some of us are creatures of of habit and we don't love change. This change was predicated based upon um, a lot of uh, proclamations and changes to regulations expiring after COVID and just general statutes um, changing throughout the year. So we actually consulted our HOA legal team and to make sure that we were in compliance with all laws and making sure we're doing everything um, above board. So hence this year's change. So be, we really do appreciate you being patient with um, the process and the, and the changes, but we wanna make sure everything's done correctly. So we did do our due diligence this year and consulted legal on a lot of the facets. So um, just wanted everyone to know that's, that's why the change has happened. Um, also today's budget ratification meeting should is really perfunctory in terms of uh, you know where we're at do we have a vote? Do we not? Um, and if 51% of your ownership does not reject your vote, uh, reject your budget, your budget is immediately um, ratified at today's meeting. So, um, and we'll get to those those numbers and where we're at here in a second once everyone gets checked in. But I just want to remind um, and thank everyone who is part of the Budget Advisory Council. I see a lot of you are on the call. Um, I I don't think Steve and I can thank you enough, as well as the Nova team for doing the work that you have done and putting in the time and asking the questions and doing your research and kind of taking it on your own as your own, like, so to speak, child <laughs> and, and really embracing it. Cause I know it's not easy and you do have to ask some tough questions and dig into some things. And we, once again, are glad that a lot of you returned <laughs> from previous years, couldn't do it without you. And we can't thank you enough and appreciate all the hard work that you've put in to drafting budgets, presenting, having conversations, revisiting, renegotiating, like going through all of that. Um, we appreciate all the feedback that you've provided as well. Um, once again, I'm proud to say it was very collaborative and I thought we got to a great place in the end. Um, so I say that because I wanna remind owners that this is actually a budget drafted by the ownership for the ownership. And I think sometimes that gets lost in the chatter that we have once in a while about things and we all don't have the same information. So this was a budget drafted by your budget advisory committee uh, council and they presented it to the board and we talked through some things and we do do our due diligence to look at all line items, making sure we're you know being cost effective where we can be and um, being fiscally responsible. So, um, I just wanted to add that in here. 
while we're waiting. I still think they're busy checking people in. Yeah, Let just an update word about half, half checked okay. in. So just okay. again, thank you for your patience. Um, we're working through it here. And, and Brandy, let me know when you're, whenever you're ready to interject as well. Um, but yeah, I, I, I hope you all utilize the Budget Advisory Council's resources that they provided too. They did spend a lot of time crafting a video for the benefit of the owners to help, you know, get new owners acquainted, old owners refreshed. So I hope you guys also utilized the, the, the cool resources that they tried to provide and to help facilitate in this process. We also did get some emails and some good feedback that we're definitely considering um, and we will take into consideration. Each year is, is a learning curve and each year is a new process. So we do appreciate those of you that did reach out with questions and provided some suggestions and feedback. Um, love it. We really do actually. And I'm gonna say, if this is a really important thing to you, I think it should be important throughout the whole year. So if you're ever curious about our spending, please reach out to, to our general manager and request a financial statement. You can do that as an owner at any point in time throughout the year. There's no need to wait to all of a sudden until November to all of us get really super interested in it. I mean, I do think it's awesome that a budget ratification meeting always gets a really good turnout when I can scroll the four pages and see a lot of new faces, familiar faces. So I do appreciate that, but we would love that kind of turnout more often at board meetings and whatnot. So we're, we're encouraging you to A, either volunteer or participate in next year's Budget Advisory Council and or, you know, as a homeowner, if you're ever curious, ask the questions, request a financial statement so you can see expenditures and things of that nature. Because the purpose of a budget ratification mailer is to mail the proposed budget, not to mail, mail financial statements and whatnot. So I think there was a little disconnect there. I just want to encourage everyone to, to reach out and ask those questions. Don't wait till November. Um, I mean, if you want to, that's your choice, but we would prefer, because we do appreciate that when you do take a look at those things, questions are asked and it generates feedback and dialogue at an opportunity when we can make changes or to make take things into consideration. It's really hard the day before to do that. <laughs> so um, I just encourage you to re use the resources that you have um, at your disposal as an owner. And, um, you know, it's all there. I know for some of you, this is like, you've heard it, you know, this is your sixth year plus coming because believe it or not, we do have a homeowner who's been here since day one, still within the community. And, you know, we have seen a, a full build out budget that was proposed then pretty much stay stagnant for almost six plus years. And then we recently started having increases and that's because we did get a lot of feedback from the owners themselves and you know them being a part of the budget process, which is really very beneficial to your community. So Brandy, you look like you're, you're ready to roll. Yeah, I just wanted to know if we were ready to go over the voting, a little bit over the voting process while they're still checking people in. I've yeah. got a couple of questions in the chat about it. So I thought that, right now might be a good time to touch on that. Sure, go for it. Um, so whoever has not voted by proxy will have the opportunity to vote um, via Zoom poll. So if you're joining us by a computer, Zoom has a feature for voting. Um, you'll have a pop-up window appear on your screen with options. You'll click the option um, that you either accept or reject. Um, you only get one one chance to do that. It's it's quick and easy, and your vote will be submitted. That's all you have to do. Um, if you do not have that option because you are calling in from a phone line, we will get to you. Um, we'll be conducting the vote through roll call. So when it's time for that, I will call out either if your name is there or by your phone number, and you can. Um, if it's just your phone number, you'll tell me your first name, last name, your address, and then you can verbally respond with in favor, against, uh, abstain, however you choose. Um, it's helpful if your Zoom application is up to date. Uh, I know that plays a part in whether or not the poll works correctly. If you don't, you can use the chat option just to let us know if you're having an issue or if some for some reason or another you were not able to cast your vote. We want to make sure that everybody has the opportunity uh, to cast their vote. Um, let's see, anything else with the voting? 
So if I could just remind everybody, uh, I'll pick on somebody I know that wouldn't mind. I see John B's iPad. So again, we're asking you to change your name in your screen to include your first name, last name, and your address. So if and you if you don't know how, John, I can let, I can fill you in. Right. So I'm seeing things like uh, Galaxy 99 and iPad Air, yep. iPad. That's a phone. Did well, change your name. We've had people chat, direct chat, one of the hosts here, and, uh, and let, say, it's me, so my name, address. We can rename it for you if you cannot find mm -hmm. the rename function. We can do that on your behalf. So if that's the easiest way to do it, we can uh, we can do that for you because again we can't count you properly without a way to connect you with your home uh, in the community. If I've already if I've already voted by proxy, do I need to do anything? It's still helpful for us to just attendance wise. Okay, we're counting attendance, and if you don't know how, so upper on your picture. In the right hand corner should be uh, three blue dots. If you click on that, you have the option to rename yourself from a drop down menu. And so you just do your first name, last name, and your address. Um, there's no three dots. Okay. Well, the three, yeah, there's three dots. Gives me full screen, split screen, or slide. No. Yeah. On the iPad, but, there's no 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 easy op option except going to your profile and keep changing everything. Right. Yeah. Okay. So for those individuals that are in you, like Christina said, reach out in the chat and let them know, and they can do it on the back end for you. I don't want anyone to stress out about it, but okay. we do need it for sure. attendance. So, yeah. So they can do it. Because you're right. There's probably different applications that might be a little bit different. I know sometimes that's harder on a phone, like. Andrew's Galaxy S9, he's probably on his phone right now and it's probably just a little bit more challenging. So it's okay. Yeah, yeah don't worry. The... It is gonna take <laughs> a little bit of time for us to yeah. go through this process. Don't worry, we're gonna make sure we get through it all. And uh, like Brandy mentioned at the end, if you haven't been able to get it to work, we will do a vote by roll call if you have not voted by proxy already. So and if we were doing this in great. person, everyone would be still be checked in this way via paper <laughs> back in the old school days where we had to find your address or your name and, and do it off on paper. So this is this is kind of uh, typical in, in some ways for this type of voting. And we appreciate everybody's patience because there will be a little bit of, you know, dead time in between as we get everybody accounted for so that we make sure that, you know, everything is done proper and everybody has the opportunity to cast their vote. Hey, we're on the, I, when I scroll through, we're on five pages. I think that's, that's a first. Good. Hello, we've lost our screen. You lost your screen. You lost, yeah. Yeah, I can't find it anywhere. We tried to block our picture, but. We can still see you and hear you. You can, um, okay. Yes, yeah. But I don't have the ability to change it. Are you on a computer? Yes. You should have a Zoom button on the bottom of your screen. There should be a bar. If you hover over that without clicking on it, there there might be a screen that pops up that you can see. It's down in your browser bar. Mm -hmm. Can you see everyone else or do you just see yourself? I can see everyone else and okay. you on the okay. big screen. Okay. okay. And if you wanna stop your video, you can hit the stop video and you, you'll stay on the call that just won't show your picture. Oh, that's fine. I just wanna do the change of the address thing, but I can't yeah. do that. <laughs> I know. For people on the computer, if you click the participants logo at the bottom of the screen, you'll it'll put your name at the top, and we'll give you an option to rename. Oh, that's the great participants yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. I just did that. Click, it does click do that. On. Time. <laughs> okay, click on yourself. Oh, you're right there. I'm here, right? No, no. <laughs> 
Just, okay. well, we're the getting one. there. We're about two thirds of the way. Through. Right. So we're working our way through here. Okay. Everyone can stay muted while you're working through it. Well, we're getting there. <laughs> See it. Well, and just as we continue, um, there was a more commonly asked question that I wanted to touch on um, to fill some time, hopefully, with some valuable information. Uh, again, we thank you for your patience. Um, one of the questions which the BAC did a really good job of kind of touching on as well in their video and in some of their informational content, but uh, there were a lot of questions related to the funds from the capital contributions and how do we see those? How are they documented in the financial statements and how are they taken into account? Um, and so I'm going to share my screen. Oh, sure. Let's clear my screen really briefly here. So I've got your most current financial statement. Um, you'll see on the balance sheet, the GL 36000 capital contributions. These are the capital contributions all time. And those are on every single one of your financial statements. Um and it is not on your income statement. And so I'm gonna stop sharing here. Um, and so that is on there. If you wanna know how many homes closed or how much is coming in month to month, you do have to subtract from the prior month. Um, we do that uh, when we report in the financial, um, financial report in your board meeting. So if you're curious, that is something the management team reports on because the number of home closings impacts your assessment income and whatnot. So that is something we're looking at. The reason capital contributions aren't a part of your income, like your assessments are, is because those are um, a one-time fee that owners are paying into the association, and the purpose is to capitalize the association. And so when, a, when associations, HOAs, start, they don't have any funds, and, and budgets are written as zero-based budgets, so your assessments are based on expenses. And so capital contributions are used to build the operating funds for the association. They're not regular routine income that is coming in. And so your budget is separately looking at your expenses and making sure assessments are enough to cover those expenses. Now, obviously in your community, it's in a unique position where you're still building out. And so the BAC, along with the management team, when we're putting you know, working on the budget, we review the amount um, in your operating account along with the number of homes and your assessment income um, and the, the amount of funds that you want to keep on hand in case there's any um, operating overages, budget overages, things like that. You never want to be in a situation where you have, you know, very little operating funds outside of your assessment income. And so that is something that is very much taken into account each year the BAC does a really good job of reviewing those funds in conjunction with your assessment income to balance how much of those to be used. And so you'll see a deficit, a budget deficit each year so far um, because those capital contribution funds are used. Uh, and that will be the same, of course, just the same with this presented budget. Um, and so hopefully that provides a little bit more information Again, we'll definitely report on that on a regular basis at the board meetings. If you have any more detailed questions, reach out via resident request or to Brandy, um, and we can help explain that a little bit more. That's a, a great one, Christina. And one of the questions I, uh, I get rather frequently is why do we operate at a budget uh, deficit every year? Well, it's, it's by design. And we do that on purpose because we do have those capital contributions coming in. We like to use them while we're getting them. They're going to end someday. But because we get those buy-ins or those capital contributions from new homes, it allows us to purposely operate at a deficit every year so we don't have to raise monthly assessments nearly as much or nearly as fast as we would have to otherwise. Christina, where are we at? I'm checking out of curiosity. We're about three quarters of the way there. We had about 75 checked in. Good. Well, this is not budget related, but I will share this. 
because these calls do get recorded. So I know we'll capture a few other people, but um, I would um, anticipate in the month of December getting a save the date notification. For, so, so some of these will go out via the sales and marketing email list. And if you're not a part of that, um, I can send something out to um, remind homeowners how they sign up for it. It's completely different email list. And then there'll be something sent out through the HOA. So we'll make sure everyone gets because we'll have multi-tiered um, events for the villages. So the first event that will occur will be a private homeowner event. So you guys will have your first event before anyone else you know, has an event, whatnot. You guys will have the first private event and that will just be for you as owners, the association. Um, and then obviously after that, um, there'll be a grand opening that TM, that Taylor Morrison will sponsor. And that'll be open to you as homeowners as well, um, to people in contract and um, potential prospects. And that'll be a TM funded event. And then they'll probably have a small um, like agent broker event. So there'll be some save the dates coming out likely in December, targeting kind of the end of January of 2024. And so in that first month, first quarter, so we've been dialing in and um, what those events look like, um, those dates. So more to come on that, but I am happy to say that we are getting close. Um, and I wish I could give you the exact date today, but I'm still we're still kind of dialing in a few things. Um, uh, but yeah, we are definitely working towards that and looking forward to allowing you guys to have your first event in the villages, just as you as owners. So um, I will. I definitely am happy to be able to share that. And i um, trying to think if there was anything else. Um, actually, the, my notes, I forgot to mention this earlier. I'm going to go back to the budget. Um, uh, during this process, the, you know, we get Nova works on a budget, and then they provide that budget to the Budget Advisory Council, who then sits down and reviews. And the, there's a lot of meetings in conjunction with the Nova team and the BAC. But when we first started reviewing kind of what a final budget looked like, we were about 300000 more in terms of what this budget would look like. So that means the assessment increase would have been larger. But because we have such good conversations and we do look at all the facets and the light items, we start trimming, we start reassessing, we start seeing what we can do and what makes sense. So we, we then kind of got to a, the point where we're at to the budget that we're proposing today, which is about, like I said, 300K less than the originally sort of initial proposed budget where we started. So it is, a, it is a lengthy process and it's a really collaborative process. And like I said, I can't thank the Budget Advisory um, Council enough because it, it is a lot and they do a lot, whether or not um, your the rest of the ownership realizes it. And this will continue on year after year. We're gonna obviously remain with going, moving forward with the Budget Advisory Council. So like I said, for those who really wanna start diving into the nitty gritty, you know, We'll start, we'll start early next year as well, so it's, it's ongoing, but they do dedicate a lot of time when we do sit down and go line by line and look at all of these things. So, um, and if, if you have any questions, once again, ask. Um, where are we at, Christina? Uh, well, I think we're getting pretty close. I was gonna say, Gurley, let us know when we're ready to start calling out any phone, phone callers, because we can go through that list top to bottom. If you're through the names in the list, let me know. I know we're getting pretty close. I'm going through right now and renaming some that I see also. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I see. Somebody I will see. Just make sure to mute everyone who's on the call. If you if you need to, um, you it might be best to use the chat function. Yeah, but uh, the other homeowners cannot see my question. I want everybody to see my question. We're having trouble hearing you, actually. At least I am. I said that this is a Zoom meeting, and if there's a question by the homeowner, it should be also shown to all the participants in, in this Zoom meeting. Instead of choosing Christina, Brandy, or Gurley for my question. 
Oh, do you mean in terms of the chat? If there's something that you want to share. So we normally do, if there's a formal homeowners forum, we will read out the questions and go through them. Um, we're kind of focusing on getting getting everyone updated, their, their, their information updated and all of that. Um, but yeah, if there's a question, we can definitely review and, and read it out if there's... Uh, some general application or some information that could be helpful. But again, I apologize. We haven't gotten to all of them. We are working through our attendance here. Yeah, at the bottom. Oh, that's her, her thing. Yeah. Okay. We're close to the end here. Let me see it on my screen. The time where I probably should have solicited good jokes. No? Oh, we're close. Looks like I have four that need me renaming. Oh, getting close. Well, so that you know what we're doing here, uh, we know how many reject votes already were submitted by proxy. And so what we're doing is we're uh, seeing who's presence and seeing whether or not you voted by proxy. And then uh, we're finding out if we have uh, a majority of the people present when added to those proxy forms to uh, see if it's viable to hold a vote, if we can reach uh, that 51%. So that's what's going on right now. Okay, I think we are good to cut to go through the phone numbers now and and uh, I'm gonna just start on the top of the list here. <clears throat> Let's scroll through or anyone that hasn't changed their name. If you've already messaged somebody, you can just let us know that. So we have an iPhone. We have somebody logged in as iPhone and somebody logged in as iPhone 2. So the first iPhone with no number, I'm going to ask you to unmute. If you could just let us know your name no. and address. I think I'm yep, that's I you. think I'm iPhone. It says iPhone me on it on my phone. Yeah, I think she just got it. Okay. Oh, so you're already signed in elsewhere? Yeah, but I just signed it. I don't know how to do this. It's totally Greek. So somebody with and I have somebody with me that couldn't get on the phone. So there's two of us here that want to vote. If there's two people present that want to vote, only one will be able to vote via the Zoom poll. And so you'll have to vote via roll call. Oh, um, why? Why could anyone she... voted by proxy already? No, we tried and we came too late. OK, um, so I can rename uh, if you can let me know who is there with you, who you are. Um, I just sent a text. Um, oh, you, if you sent it over via chat, perfect. We'll get you. Yeah. Updated. And perfect. mine is the Colville address and hers is the Bothorp. Okay. 
Christina, I see a bunch of other phone numbers still on my screen. Just phone numbers. Have we gotten to those? Not yet. Let me get There's down. 11 of us here at the pavilion. Has anyone voted via uh, proxy or everyone would like to vote if a vote is held? Everyone would like to vote. Okay. So that gr the group will need to vote by roll call. And so we'll just take that into account in our numbering that there's 11. Okay. Unaccounted for. Um, so I've got a phone number 206-498-6529. I'm going to ask you to unmute if you could just let us know who you are. Um, so that that is this is Elizabeth Garrison, and I'm online remotely, and that is my husband Mike Lawson's phone number. So are you also logged into the meeting separately? I am. I am logged in as okay. Elizabeth Garrison. So Perfect. he's just calling in. Perfect. No problem. That's totally fine. But what we're only gonna it's one per household, so we'll count the name that's logged in. That is no problem. Thank you for confirming. All right, so the next number is 206-941-6933. Again, let us know if you need to be accounted for. <laughs> and if so, your name and address. We're going to go on to the next. Mm -hmm. We've got a 253-534-9553. I can ask you to unmute. Again, if you are not logged in to a Zoom account with your name and address, please let us know your name and address. Okay. <clears throat> Next one, we have a 360-359-6481. Yeah, this is crazy. Oh, I thought I was smoking. Is this the 360 number or... Okay, and again, if people are just calling in with lines as well and they've already logged in, they've already voted, totally fine. You just need to make sure if you need to be accounted for and want to participate that we know who you are. Uh, we've got a, oh, another 360, 360-489-1852. I think I saw a 360 unmute. Are you there? I'm here. Yes, I'm here. What is your name and address? Happy Andrus, 3702 Oakwood Street, Southeast. 
Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, let's see. There is a 865-805-3916. Bingo. <laughs> I don't have a prize. I apologize. Is that you? Who who was that? It was William. It was William. Okay, you're accounted for. That is you. Hello. Oh, that's someone different. Hello. It's 865. Yes, 865. Yes, what is your name and address? Carl Taylor, T A Y L O R, 2744 Arrowroot Loop. Perfect. Thank you. All right. I think that is all the phone numbers. We're just going to take a couple more minutes here, go through our list, make sure we've accounted for anybody. If anybody is on a call and they have not been able to change their name or spoken out yet, please unmute and do so, so we can make sure that we've accounted for you. Christina, what about the individuals at the pavilion? Are we gonna do roll call next? For attendance? Yeah, we can. Okay, or I, maybe you wanna start that if, if Brandy and, and Gurley are doing the other stuff. Yeah. Hi there. I'm still not showing as with an address. It's Linda Kim. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And what is the address? We are 3342 Arrow Route. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let me know, Brandy and Gurley, if we are close to being ready. We can take a roll call attendance for any group members. Yeah, let's, I think we could do that. All right. I know we had one group at the uh, one large group of 11 owners at the pavilion, all of which you have not voted. Um, can that group please unmute? And we're just going to ask each of you to just say your name and address and just give us a minute in between so we can mark you off. Does anybody know how to unmute? Yes. Can you hear me? We can hear you. And if my name is Cliff Samuels. My address is 3326 Okanagan Court Southeast. He's just, he doesn't know. You've been checked in. I have another I have another gentleman here who had to go home because he can't see during the dark and his name is William Casper 
and he's at 9134 Schwartz Court Southeast. And I've got his proxy here, but he had to go home because he was worried about seeing his way home. Okay, I'm going to make a note of that. Can you state that address one more time, please? Yes, it's uh, 9134 Schwartz Court Southeast, William Casper. All right. Hello, this is Peggy Klein. Uh, I live at uh, 3105 Arrowroot Loop Southeast. And I am here with Gina Kemp. Do we have both Burley and Brandy? I know we have uh, Peggy. Somebody give a Gina Kemp lives at three one zero five also. <laughs> Oh, perfect. Yeah, she's been checked in. Got it. You're good. Thank you. Okay. Okay. This is Linda Thompson. I'm at 3615. And I don't know how to unmute. That's why I'm here. On this part. We heard you. You're good. And you are checked in. Thank you. Recording in progress. So I want to let you guys know that I'm in the pavilion with my husband. And I live 97, 2527 Low Thought Street. And this is Yolanda and Ronald. Okay, you've been checked in. Can anybody hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I see my name on the list, but I don't know if I'm checked in or not. Can you just state your name and address just so we can double check? Uh, Gary Costanti, 9437 Bothorp Street, Southeast. You have been, yep. All right, is there anyone else in a group setting that does not have their name represented in the participant list or has not uh, spoken their name into the meeting or voted by proxy? Here, use my phone. Go ahead and so talk. It's a part of a vote. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and talk. Just talk. Let us know what your name is and what you're on. Okay, hello. Hi. Hi, my name is Grace Lee, 3731 Oakwood Street. That's all right. Okay. Perfect. We have you. Thank you. Thank you. Go. Oh. Nina, we have a homeowner sitting with us who called in, but her name. 
uh, give that to you right now. Yes, please. My name is Yeon Sun Carter and 253-331-0895. I gave you, but something not going well on my phone. Can you repeat the address, please? The address. Uh, 3726 Oakwood Street, Southeast Lacey. Perfect. We have you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For anybody else, and again, we've got a couple of chats. If you've already voted by proxy, you you know you're welcome to stay on. You do not need to, obviously. Um, There'll be a little bit more process going through this um, and it will be recorded so and posted for owners. <clears throat> Anybody else in a group setting? Who was it that was in the pavilion with 11? Uh, that was me that spoke spoke up about the 11, but one's already left. Okay. But one, another person came, so maybe there's a... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're just going to need names and addresses so that we can... We we got you. We gave you all our names and addresses. All of them? Oh, okay. Sorry yeah. about that. unorganized. Christina, are you able to see how many individuals are on the call that have not voted so far? Yes, I can take a quick look here where we're at now, at least. I think we're getting pretty close. One moment. like we're at 61. Randy and Gurley, we're going to double check that number, of course, and make sure we have our 90 present, 61 who have not voted. But we will double check that here. And again, make sure we're going to go through our chat, see if, we, if there's anything else. Um, So I must have missed something. How do I vote? It hasn't been caught up yet. We're in the check-in process and um, we're determining how many people have not voted that are on the call and that will take us to our next step. And we're determining how many people have not already voted by proxy in advance. Mm -hmm. uh. 
you need a majority of homeowners to vote to reject the budget. And so we're double checking if we in fact have a majority of the homeowners that have voted by proxy or are in attendance. <clears throat> Hi, can you tell me what that number is as far as residents that need to vote? Thank you. Uh, it's 159. It's 317 recorded owners in our system and uh, it's a majority of those. Thank you. Yeah, good question. So it's probably important to point out that uh, this is obviously a, a bit cumbersome, what we're doing here, and we would have much preferred to have done it electronically in advance like we did last year. It would have been our preference. It was very smooth uh, last year. Unfortunately, uh, after the governor's ending of the COVID proclamation and some changes in statutes, we are not able to do that anymore. We have to have anybody who votes in advance by proxy. We have to have their written signature. And uh, it's difficult. Uh, thanks for bearing with us. Uh, but uh, I understand that this is not the smoothest uh, method. Well, and we'll likely have a different method next year. <laughs> a pretty simple. Be vote yes or no and drop it off in a little box up there. <laughs> it wouldn't take very long to count them. Yeah, unfortunately, we can't do that either. So we still have to hold the meeting by law. Mm -hmm. and technically, you're supposed to uh, ratify or reject um, within the meeting, and you're supposed to verify the votes within the meeting. We, we looked into it. Trust Steve's not wrong. We would prefer the other way. <laughs> and actually, legal counsel even necessarily didn't recommend a proxy, but we felt like that was the right thing to do for this community and more, more appropriate. So we did have them draft up the proxy for us, and that was those who used it did utilize it. So um, maybe that's the route to go for some. Can you hear me? Who's yes. me? I, just, I think I've just figured this out. I'm in my car on my phone. This is Nancy Joe, and I live at 3819 Eagledale Court Southeast. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Yes, can someone confirm they have? Her check in. And I'm here too. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. <laughs> So complicated. <laughs> there you are. Yeah, you don't want to see me though.
All right, Brandy and Gurley, are we ready to do a final count? Yeah. Anyone else still working on thing in terms of checking in or chatting with owners or anything else? Okay, all three of us are going to count one more time, uh, double check the numbers and uh, confirm before we call a vote or not. <clears throat> Give us one moment here. Oh, well, no, the next one just tap it right. You'll save me. All right, we have confirmed all three. There's sixty one owners present who have not already voted and so we needed eight, uh 89 in order mm -hmm. to achieve majority that 159 number well how do i vote so essentially oh, what christina christina can you repeat those numbers again yeah so we have 61 owners present today that have not already voted by proxy. And so based on the number of proxies we had received with a rejection vote, because again, we need a majority to reject, not a majority to participate. Um, we needed 89 in order to meet that 159 or the majority to require a vote. Um, without those numbers, we, you, the, a majority is not present uh, that can vote the budget down. <clears throat> right. So, Christina, uh, let me just start at the beginning, and you correct me if I'm wrong. So we have 317 total homes registered. 159 of those would have to vote no to have a rejection. We had 70 reject, uh, 70 votes to reject uh, counted in advance, sent in by proxy. Yes. So 159 minus those 70, we would need 89 people present in this meeting who had not already cast a proxy ballot to hold a vote. Correct. And we have 61. All right. And Thank for you. minute purposes, we have 91 accounted for in the meeting, but Thank 30 you. of those have already voted. Yep. Yeah. Oh, wait. So 91 accounted, 30 had already voted? So yes. More. Okay. Thank you. So what that means is that we're actually not going to have a Zoom poll show up on your screen. That means we are not required to have a vote due to the majority not being present to reject the budget that was proposed. So, so that means the budget is ratified in tonight's meeting and then beginning January 2024, um, that'll be your new assessment, which I had it up on my screen and now I don't. Oops, my bad. I'm Christina. sorry, I really did not understand how this process is going. So are you saying that you're only accounting the proxies, whether or not they vote yes or no? And then no. after that, you determine whether or not the participants in the Zoom cannot vote? So no, it's not about can or cannot vote. So what Christina was explaining is that we received 118 proxies 
as of 5 p.m. yesterday. 70 of those proxies voted to reject and not approve the budget. So you have 317 registered unit, uh, owners in your community right now. So that means for the majority to be present on today's call to require a vote to reject the budget, you would need 159 owners. Well, Currently on the call, you only have 61 owners that have not already voted via proxy that would need to, if required to have a vote, vote now. Okay. Since we don't have the 89 total required, we are not having a vote. So it's not about can or can't. It's it's just not necessary because okay. the majority of the okay. owners has not been uh, is not attending. And okay, so how many in the Zoom who voted in the proxy, and how many in the Zoom did not vote for proxy? Thirty one. Thirty did not vote. So Thirty one out of the Zoom participants did not provide a proxy. No, no. Let's no. try it. So there are 61 people present in today's meeting that we're sitting in that did not cast a vote. There were 70 people that cast a vote in advance. And so if we take that 70 plus the 61, we reach a number of 131 total people present, whether they did it in advance or they're here today. So even if everybody in this meeting cast a no vote, we'd only reach a combined total of 131. The 61 present, all voting no, plus the 70 votes in advance. And 131 doesn't reach the 51% threshold of 159 people that would have had to have voted no. So since it's mathematically impossible with the people present here added to the number of votes cast in advance, it's mathematically impossible to reach 159. There's no legal reason or requirement to hold a vote at all. You made it clear, but the other people did not make it clear. I appreciate that explanation. You're welcome. So if, if there's people that haven't voted, how can you assume they're saying yes? Just because they didn't show. That's because if you don't vote, it's counted as yes. Correct. Well, I have a, a, a question with that because a lot of people in this pavilion, that it's like maybe 12 of us, a lot of people was confused on how to get into this Zoom. So I can imagine the people that are home that don't even have a computer, they're older, they don't know how to use Zoom. I don't see how you guys are going to take that uh, in, in against us. I encourage everybody that has any feedback about the voting process this year, submit a resident request so that we can review this next year and come up with an alternative. Or that doesn't do nothing for this year. No, because a lot of a lot of stuff that's in the budget is like over the the numbers is over. It's like the internet, eight thousand dollars. Yolanda it, Yolanda, if you would like to make an appointment with me and come down and discuss the financials, I would be happy wait, to wait do a that. minute. She's trying to voice out. Okay. This is a Zoom meeting. Let her do it. This isn't an owner's meeting for open forum, but anybody who would but like to say set... voting for financials, I think she has a, a very good reason to ask a question. I don't know how you can I ask a question? Yes. So I, I'm this is going to be a very unfavorable statement, but um I realize there's some emotions cropping up. But um, it, it is stated in our statute, and we can produce this statute if if the ownership would like, if this helps people. But th this yeah. is this is the process. I don't know how to find her. We will do that at a later date. This is not the the platform to yeah. do that. We'll do it, and we'll show you where we are following the requirements, and this is legally sound, even the Zoom, because we did also confirm that with legal. Um, that was also discussed. So like Brandy said, this isn't necessarily an open forum per se. This is a, a perfunctory process to ratify the budget. We've legally met the requirements in terms of needing a budget. So um, this ratifies the current budget. And I do highly encourage if you want to go over, we want to hear your comments, your feedbacks, 
set up an appointment with Brandy. She's more than happy to go over with it. Submit a resident request. It goes to the board. We will review it and we'll get, craft an answer and, and respond to your current concerns and questions. Um, I think that is the best route. So then you get personalized responses for your questions and you're more than welcome to share them with your friends that may have the same. Um, and maybe we can even collect them and send them out as a group if, if that's something that people feel that would be val valid. But I think at this point in time, um, we're, I'm going to formally adjourn the meeting at 513. I had a question, please. Mm -hmm. Could someone share a screen and type the numbers up so we can see them? You know, the total number of proxies that were received and then the total number of people that are in the meeting um, Why don't, and the total number that them? were required. So Jeff, what we're gonna do is I just actually formally adjourn the meeting. We will type that out and send it out to the full ownership because we planned on updating anyone as well on the result of today's meeting. That so we'll, like we'll cover everyone's bases that way. To treat us that way, it's ridiculous. I have a question. The, uh, people are questioning and you guys are not, you guys are not entertaining. This is our time, you know? And it's our money. If anyone this would like to set up in a, get a meeting with Nova me. Nova out of the system and get our own uh, management company. So there is, if you refer to your CCNRs in the back, there actually is a section on language about um, requiring, uh, having a requirement to have management. Um, if the board at a later date wants to, to, to find a different management company, I, I see people shaking their heads. It's, it's, this is a collective thing. This isn't just Nova. Nova doesn't make decisions. So um, they're trying to help facilitate this process for us and with you. I understand there's a lot of motions and people feel frustrated, but like I said, this isn't really the platform. I'm encouraging everyone to do this sooner because we get to a point where we can't really affect change and then this becomes just not a positive experience for a lot of people. You feel not heard. You don't feel like you're having a chance to speak, but that's actually not the, the, the true function of a budget ratification meeting. And, you know, obviously there's things that we need to each year we try to improve on and we think we get closer, but obviously this is a learning curve as well. We're trying, we'll take it. We really want to hear your feedback, but we really need it to be in a place where we can track it. And it's where we can actually provide appropriate and correct and and detailed responses for you. So at this point in time, like I said, I'm going. I formally adjourn the meeting at 5:13. I appreciate and uh, really, uh, I know that wasn't easy, as Steve mentioned. So obviously, this was the first time that we did it this way. Um, not ideal, but we will look into and exploring. We have quite a bit of time to find a more resourceful way that meets the legal guidelines um, for next year. So thank you for being patient. It's not fun to sit on a call like this. I get it. And we appreciate it. And we do respect everyone as homeowners, even though you may not be feeling that at the moment. Um, we get it. I just, this isn't the right platform for it right now. We want it to be productive for everyone. So I will uh, hopefully I wish everyone um, a happy holidays, however you may celebrate. And I know our next board meeting is towards the end of January um, in 2024. And please stay tuned. Uh, we will make sure everyone gets the save the dates for the um, amenity uh, deliveries and the private owner amenity event. So. I think in order for right, us thank to you. Thank you. Questions and Hello, everyone. Questions. Hello. Thank you. I think we need to uh, have the board consider a quarterly question and answer sessions quarterly by the from the homeowners i think sure well this and please 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 put that in writing i think that's great please send it over to brandy we want to hear those things put that in writing for every recommendation we need we like that because we know it allows us to track it and by the way the other one is why is taylor morrison in this meeting i am taylor morrison and i just want you to know this is not a builder's budget i i did not do your budget I help facilitate the budget. Your budget in the in the meeting. Taylor your budget Morrison is still the developer for yeah. the community. That is why Taylor Morrison is here and a part of the board. This is HOA. 
but I am the declarant representative for the builder who is still in control of the community until transition, which happens when 75% of your units have closed. Okay. And I will be present until then. And that's when you elect a fully homeowner run board. So I am part of your HOA until then. Okay, but thanks. You're welcome. If you need help submitting a resident request, feel free to come down and I can help you um, do that. Do you have it on the on the site, the website? Yep, you can do it on the portal. And if you need any assistance, feel free to come down and I can help you. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night.